The Churchville Schoolhouse opens the door to the best education in history. Visitors to the Churchville Schoolhouse take a step back in time to watch history unfold in a restored National Register of Historic Places property that dates to the Civil War era. Students of today walk in the footsteps of local farm children from the early days of DuPage County for an authentic living history experience led by a schoolmarm of the early 1900s. A visit to the Churchville Schoolhouse is hands-on, educational, and fun. Participants use slate chalkboards and McGuffey readers for the day's lessons, and children will be asked to follow proper classroom etiquette. Reading, writing, and arithmetic are practiced, and students test their skills during an old-fashioned spelling bee. And of course, no school day is complete without recess featuring games of the early 1900s. The schoolhouse is a popular place for scouts and day camps too. Group visits can also be arranged for service clubs, tour groups, and other adult organizations. The Churchville Schoolhouse Living History Program is operated by the Elmhurst Historical Museum. Call the museum today to book a field trip or find out more information. Call 630-833-1457 or visit our website at churchvilleschoolhouse.org. The Churchville Schoolhouse is waiting to open the doors for your school or community group. Plan a memorable learning experience today for the best education in history. Welcome to Elmhurst Time Travelers. I'm Ken Bartels, your host, and today I have Lance Tauser, curator of exhibits at the Elmhurst Historical Museum, and Brian Berghager, its director, and we're here on the second floor of the Gloss Mansion. In our last program, gentlemen, we were at the Churchville Schoolhouse, and we were talking about the new Elmhurst exhibit, by all accounts, the story of Elmhurst. It was a preview of the exhibit. Now we're standing in the exhibit. How does that feel? Well, it's wonderful to have the exhibit up, and the exhibit's come a long way from uh, last time we visited with you at Churchville Schoolhouse. As you said, it's open now to the public, and we're getting great reviews. What's it feel like, Lance, to finally, after years of preparation, to have it be open? Well, obviously, it's a bit of a relief that, that we were able to pull it together. We had an amazing team that kind of worked very, very hard to get the openings going. But uh, I think it's, uh, you know, there's a sense of pride that uh, you, you started with an idea, you carried it all the way through. We had the foundation sort of uh, coming up with uh, the funding to make it all happen. And so when I walk through the space, I, I really get a sense of pride of, of, of what we've achieved as a team. What's been the initial public reaction? Well, we had a great opening weekend here at the Historical Museum when the exhibit opened. In addition to the exhibit, we had live music, children's activities, and refreshments. And folks who visited the, muse the museum's exhibit at that point, I think, came away thinking that there's something for everyone in this exhibit, something for young kids, something for adults, something for new residents of Elmhurst, as well as for people who have lived here 20, 30, or 50 years. Yeah, I really enjoy watching people interface with the exhibit. So I usually, you know, stand in the corner a little bit and sort of try to watch, you know, how people walk through the space. Uh, you know, as much time as we spend uh, working on this, you cannot uh, control human behavior. So they're going to go to places initially that I wouldn't expect. They're going to look for things that uh, in a different way. And it actually, it really adds a lot to us. We, we've been sort of... Uh, 
making notes and asking questions all along the way. The, the reaction has been tremendous and, and people, I think, are, are getting it from the standpoint that there's a lot here. Uh, they always come away with saying, wow, this is amazing and I've got to come back because there's a lot more to see. And that's really what we were hoping to get. Now, the new exhibit is on the entire second floor of the Gloss Mansion, as we will see, because we're going to go all the way through it. But one of the things that impresses me about the exhibit is its sequencing. So I don't need a lot of description because we're going to go to all these places, but when you come up the stairs, what kind of order do you go through the exhibit? Now, Brian, why don't you start? Well, I'll start, Ken. Uh, visitors are greeted with some iconic photographs of Elmhurst, and we've done something special with those photographs that I'll share with you. And then, Lance? Well, then uh, we really tried to make a, a multiple educational approach to the, to the main gallery. So there's, there's the sections of the exhibit include this introductory element that Brian was talking about. But there's a main gallery where most of the interpretive elements are and all of the artifacts are and the images and all the interfaces and things. And then there's a, a, a middle section where we put in a real signature technology exhibit on the uh, geographical history of the, of, the, of the city. And then the last section is a, a mini theater, the space that we're currently in. Well, let's talk about this mini theater. What are we seeing here? Well, this is an eight-minute documentary that uh, shares with our visitors a lot of iconic photographs, iconic scenes of Elmhurst's history. And narrated and, and completely shot with vintage footage. Well, well, narrated by Bob Surratt, sort of a Chicago icon. We loved his voice, and he actually uh, was involved in a, in a changing exhibit that we produced. And uh, it's, it's, it's got an interpretive thread that really kind of puts, in, uh, you know, puts the city's history in a historical context in an eight-minute sort of you know, uh, historical uh, narrative. You know, uh, a lot of images go by. Uh, a lot of, uh, of the city's history is sort of summarized in this. And it's a really good introductory element so that if, if people come in and they sit down and watch these eight minutes, if that's the only thing they do, which we hope it isn't, um, they're, they're going to get a, a good sense of our city's history. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And now we're going to go to the very beginning of the new exhibit here in the Gloss Mansion. As you come up the stairs at the Gloss Mansion, the first thing you encounter about the new exhibit is this large projection on the wall. And Brian, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, Ken, as you can imagine, the beginning of an exhibit is a very important part of the show. And here at the museum, we wanted to start the exhibit using two photographs that show icons here in Elmhurst, places or scenes that are readily identifiable. And so we selected two photographs. One is of the conservatory that's operated by Elmhurst Park, as you see. And the other is a street scene on York Street in front of York Theater. But we didn't stop there. We wanted to do better than simply having two uh, still photographs. So we were able to partner with Green Man Theater Troupe here in Elmhurst. And through some green stage, green screen technology, we brought life to the still photographs. And you can see that here. The actors in the photographs in the photographs are from Green Man Theater Troupe. And they were filmed in front of a green screen and then dropped into the still photograph. So what you see is a still photograph with actors from Green Man Theater Troupe uh, and even a little automobile passing along that was placed into uh, the photograph uh, through the magic of green screen. And we created uh, short stories. So with about 30 seconds of uh, the York Theater shot and 30 seconds of the conservatory shot, there's a short little story that's told uh, through the magic of modern technology. And these are iconic scenes in Elmhurst. Of course, uh, the conservatory was built in about 1923 by Elmhurst Park District. Uh, Wilder Park was the first park 
here in Elmhurst, and the Park District was formed uh, to accept a bequest from Thomas Wilders to create a park. And then the uh, York, York Street scene, of course, is something that I think anybody in Elmhurst or any visitor in Elmhurst will recognize because it includes the York Theater marquee, which is still there today. Brian, this is a fascinating bit of technology and history melded together. And I've watched visitors come here during the opening week, and they're absolutely fascinated with this. Thank you for your description. Thank you. in the heart of the new exhibit now with Patrice Roche, the marketing and communications specialist for the museum. We have a number of themed towers here as well as a lot of traditional exhibits. Patrice, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, this to me is a really interesting component of the exhibit. And what's great about it is you walk in, it's very impressive, and you see these four large object towers. And what's different about these towers as compared to maybe the way people are used to experiencing exhibits is rather than chronological, over time, they're really geared to themes. We have one that's about play, one about culture, community, and work. And what I really find great about them is you can experience them again and again and find something interesting that maybe you didn't notice before. Um, specifically, this is an excellent way for us to showcase many of the objects from our collection that people have probably never seen. They may not know we ever collected some of these things. Well, we're about to show you. <laughs> and so what I really like is that people will get some of the sense of not just how time went through Elmhurst, but how people lived, worked, and um, experienced each other. And to me, it's really a great aspect. Um, you'll see, I'll show you right back here, this is the work object tower. And so this is all themed around all four sides of it about businesses that have come and gone in Elmhurst. Um, you'll see everything from Rabies Dairy, which was one of the oldest bills, businesses in Elmhurst, to uh, the Quarry, Bader Brow Brewery, um, Superior Ambulan Ambulance, and here's our friend the Keebler Elf, which you know many people remember of the days that Keebler was here in Elmhurst. Um, I think a really fascinating component is that we've added to each of the towers an embedded video display so people can um, listen to interviews and see people who have worked here, played here, um, part of the cultural arts experience here. And all you have to do is press a button here and you'll be able to get this firsthand um, oral history from people, which is a great way for people to learn about Elmhurst history. Um, so all you have to do is just press this button and there you go. I think what makes the Spring Road District so unique is that the majority of the businesses there and the property there is owned by people that live and work in Elmhurst. A lot of the businesses are owner occupied, uh, whether it's us at the Algram Funeral Home, uh, Allen Heating, you've got the McKnighters that are multiple generations right there. Um, you've got Jack Island down at the Silverado that's been there for over 20 years. You know, these are people that have been invested in town. Uh, they take pride in their property, they take pride in their business, and because they also pay taxes here, uh, they have a, a vested interest in what happens on Spring Road. Um, I think that was very 
obvious when the city said they wanted to repave a part of the street and maybe fix some of the uh, curbing and some of the sidewalks. And the members of the Spring Road Business District got together and decided, well, if we kick in a little extra money, will you do all of it? And so the Spring Road Business District decided to become an SSA, voted on that, and uh, became an SSA, a uh, special service area within the city of Elmhurst, and allowed themselves to be taxed an additional amount so that when the city did the street repair, they would also... We're still in the heart of the exhibit here on the second floor of the Gloss Mansion, and we're with Nancy Wilson, curator of collections. It's the biography wall. It has 20 famous Elmhurst people. And Nancy, how were these folks selected? Well, we tried to get a variety of occupations, and we tried to get a balance of men and women, and one of the qualifications was you could no longer be living because we didn't want people vying for a place or vying for a relative to be in the wall. So who are some of, who are some of these folks? We have a magician, Harlan Tarbell, who lived in Elmhurst for 40 years and he performed all over the world and he wrote a volume of uh, six volumes, a set of books about how to do magic. And we have um, Edward Marquardt, who founded Elmhurst Hospital, he was an early physician in Elmhurst. Um, we have Hazel Dame, who was the poet laureate of Elmhurst. She was a writer, but some people don't know that she was the first woman to teach at Elmhurst College when she first moved to Elmhurst. And I presume that over time this wall can be updated and changed or expanded. Yes, it, almost every component in the exhibit is um, fixed so that it can be changed, updated, new people might be put in um, over time. And how do visitors interact with this particular part of the exhibit? Well, they can look at the photographs and then there are iPads on either side and you just press the iPad and you'll end up with the same images up here. These folks are in birth order, by the way. That's how Lance decided to place them. So if someone looks interesting, like this woman here, you can just push her portrait, and you'll see a picture of her, and then it will tell you in 50 words, we were told no more than 50 words, to write um, a brief summary of her life. She was the first woman doctor at Elmhurst Hospital, Elizabeth Copenhagen. Well, thank you, Nancy. This is fascinating, and I'm sure everyone will want to spend some time with the biography wall. We're back with Lance in the interactive map room, which is right adjacent to the mini theater where we began. And Lance, what's the technology we're looking at here and how does one interact with it? Well, this is a kind of one of the signature exhibits in, in, the, in the whole exhibit. This, this, this circular shaped cyclorama room allows us to sort of focus our patrons' uh, attention on the geographical history of our town. And so we developed this along with the project partners so that the technology allows you to dial a decade and see the features of the city and how it changes over time. So for instance, if there was a school that was built in the 1920s, but in the 1970s it was torn down, that school would only exist during the decades in which you were looking at. So it really allows people that have lived here a long time to kind of go back and see the way the town was and see how it's changed over time. And we've been able to populate it with images from our collection and aerial maps, and it's a really intuitive technology. 
And in this particular space, the interaction between the tabletop and the wall mounting allows you to do things for groups. Right. We wanted the flexibility of, of making it so that multiple users could use it if there wasn't someone here doing a, a demonstration or a, or a program. But when it's in this sort of demonstration mode, it allows us to take over the entire tabletop as well as the mirrored monitor on the wall. And it makes it so that we can kind of focus the entire program and walk people through time geographically, pointing out how things changed and, and certain important points in time that, and how the landscape is changed. And given the nature of technology today, the number of images and the kinds of things you can do with this is probably almost limitless. Yeah, our, our plan is to, is to get people acquainted with how it, work, how it works now. And then every year and every so often, we're going to keep adding images, keep adding icons, and keep adding features. A new feature is going to be where uh, if one person has a portal and another person has a portal, if they actually touch, there'll be an opportunity for them to actually join and make the portal even bigger. So it actually adds sort of a, a, a duality and a, and a partnership aspect to the, in a, to the interface that we hadn't really thought of at the beginning. But you're right. Technology changes so often, and we're going to be able to kind of upgrade as we go. We bought a really great uh, piece here and it was really uh, through the foundation they they allowed us to add this sort of higher technology exhibit a feature and we're really pleased to have this here and and be able to sort of adjust it and enhance it as we go along and I called it the interactive map room but what do you call it we call it the cyclorama the map cyclorama and we built a, a circular room here with aerial photographs of the town and uh, it's really a, a very focused uh, space. Uh, the light is controlled. Really, the idea is for people to sort of really get into it and, and spend a little bit of time playing with it. So there you have it, a quick tour of, by all accounts, the story of Elmhurst. We're standing here at the beginning of the exhibit because the donor wall is here. These individuals and businesses helped raise through the Visionary Voices campaign over $300,000, a large portion of which was used in this exhibit all private money. So this is a gift to all of you from these people who live in Elmhurst, who work in Elmhurst, who care about Elmhurst. The story of Elmhurst, after all, is the story of all of you. For Elmhurst Time Travelers, I'm Ken Bartels, and we'll see you again.
The Elmhurst Historical Museum, located in downtown Elmhurst, is proud to present award-winning exhibits for visitors of all ages. Our adult tea time talk series, family programs, and special events make learning about history interesting and fun. Admission is free and on-site parking is available. Visit the Elmhurst Historical Museum soon. Call us today or go to our website for the latest program details.